Hi, I'm Dr. Matt Skalski, and in this video, I want to review the normal radiographic anatomy of the ankle with you. And as part of our standard normal minimum ankle series, we're going to have an A to P view, a medial oblique view, and a lateral view. So let's start here with our A to P view, and I'm going to have a few of my 3D diagrams here to help us uh, reference for comparison for the anatomy. And so mainly when we're looking at the ankle, we're focusing on the things surrounding the ankle mortise joint, which is this structure. And it's composed of three different facets. We've got our lateral facet, our superior facet with the Taylor dome, and then our medial facet with the medial malleolus. And the lateral malleolus here uh, come, is kind of gently curving this way. And then it has our articular portion, and then there's a ligamentous portion which kind of scoops in like that. And then it kind of curves up this way into the syndesmotic region, which we'll see a bit better on the medial oblique view. And uh, similarly with that lateral facet, we'll see better on that uh, mortise view or medial oblique view as well. And, uh, and this is the lateral process of our talus here. And our medial malleolus, you'll notice, has two different contours here. It has the tip of the medial malleolus, and then we have the posterior uh, portion back here, which is a bit flatter. And as we look through our um, talus, we actually see the posterior tubercle of the talus. I'll show you that momentarily. And then this is the medial uh, process of the talus uh, projected over here. And then sometimes we'll see the navicular kind of a poke out here and a few other structures of the foot, depending on the collimation, like the sesamoid bones. So this is what the lateral facet of the talus looks like. And, uh, and it's this kind of V-shaped structure here. Um, and it does you know, stick a little bit as we saw. And when we look at that medial process, um, it's this kind of bulgy out region right here. Um, and it's kind of the, a bit smoother than the lateral process. And so that uh, sometimes we'll see depending on, again, the projection. And so when we're looking at the you know, frontal view of the foot here, you can see that we're looking down the foot because this is an A to P view. Unlike a foot x-ray, which is taken as a dorsal plantar view down this way, ankle x-rays are taken this way. Um, so we're really not interested in seeing the foot all that much. And depending on how, the, how plantar flex the foot is, uh, sometimes we can actually see right down the calcaneus as kind of like this tube-shaped structure. Um, and so let me rotate this around here. And I just wanted to show you, you know, the posterior process of the talus here. So you can kind of see why we see that through um, the talus like this. And then depending on, again, you know, how their foot is tilted, we might even see sometimes that subtalar joint, the posterior facet of the subtalar joint kind of projected as a line uh, underneath of there. All right, so now let's talk about the medial oblique view here. Um, and depending on how rotated this is, might be called the mortise view. And so again, we see that lateral process of the talus kind of poking out here. Then we see the lateral facet of the ankle mortise joint, the superior facet with the tibial plafond, and then we see the medial facet over here as well. And uh, this is the physial scar. So this is where our growth plate was when we were kids that as we uh, become skeletally mature, that fuses and it kind of leaves this uh, sclerotic line, which we call the physial scar. Sometimes you'll see a variable amount of that in the fibula here as well. Um, and again, you can see the articular portion of the lateral malleolus and then the non-articular portion uh, for ligamentous insertions here. We can see a bit of the posterior facet of the subtalar joint underneath it here as well. And then another thing that I mentioned we can look for a bit better here is where the fibula overlaps with the tibia here. We've got the uh, you know fibular notch of the tibia here that this kind of fits uh, in here. So you can kind of think of this three-dimensionally as this kind of like scooped out region. And... Uh, and this is our syndesmotic portion, okay? And so you want to make sure that that's not widened. Similarly, you want to make sure the ankle mortise joint is even with the whole way across the joint. Um, and if that's not the case, then you probably have some ligamentous injury or instability, potentially need stress views to show that in some people. All right, so now let's spend a little bit of time here on the lateral view because the lateral view has the you know, largest wealth of information on our ankle and foot studies. And, uh, and we do have to spend a little time reviewing the anatomy here because there's a lot of it that we have to look at. Um, and so I just wanted to start here with the medial facet of the ankle mortise joint, which kind of parallels the contour of the medial malleolus. Um, and so if we look through here, we can see that. And it explains why we see that tip of the lateral malleolus, and then we see that kind of flat portion uh, giving us what we saw on the frontal view is that kind of sclerotic line. And then we have to look through the tibia 
to see the fibula and we kind of have to trace the whole outline of it here and we actually do have to spend a bit of time doing that so that we don't miss um, minimally or non-displaced oblique fractures that are in, um, kind of more in the coronal plane uh, which can only be seen on the lateral view. Um, all right, so this again is our tibial plafond, and we call this region back here our posterior malleolus, and again, that can be variably sized. In some people, it can actually stand down quite a bit and cause posterior impingement. All right, so now let's talk about our uh, Taylor anatomy. So up here is our Taylor neck, uh, and it, in most people will be nice and smooth, but in some people, they'll have a little bit of a ridge here. Sometimes that ridge will be right on the Taylor neck, and then occasionally people will have a Taylor beak, uh, this kind of prominence up here more anteriorly. And when we see that, you know, that does increase uh, the likelihood that they might have a uh, subtalar coalition. This is our talonavicular joint and the head of the talus. Uh, this is our lateral process of the talus, which is our this more V-shaped structure. And then uh, we may see the uh, posterior facet here to, you know, varying degrees, uh, depending on the obliquity on the lateral view. Similarly here with the sustentacular facet, which kind of parallels that. Um, and then this is our medial process of the talus back here. And then the posterior process in this case looks normal. Um, it's not hypertrophy, but sometimes it's really long like this, and that's called a striata process. And uh, frequently it's simply ununited to the rest of the um, talus as well. And we'll see a nice corticated kind of round to triangular structure here, and that's called an os trigonum. And you do want to make sure that it's nicely corticated all the way around um, and uh, they don't have posterior impingement or a fracture of the posterior process in some cases, but that's pretty rare. All right, this black triangle back here is called Kager's fat pad or Kager's triangle. And then we see the calcaneal tubercle is this little bump right here. And the anterior process of the calcaneus, we don't see super well here, but it's shaped like this. <clears throat> and then again, depending on the obliquity, we may or may not see the, the anterior facet uh, with the talus uh, next to the sustentacular facet of the subtalar joint. And, um, and so we can follow this posterior facet up and around, and again, sometimes it'll curve off like this and extend some length underneath of the posterior uh, tubercle of the talus. And then the calcaneal tuberosity here should have a nice smooth transition into the first portion of the three facets of the calcaneal tuberosity. Okay, if it does have a little bit of a bump here like that, that's called a Hagelin deformity, and that's usually a chronic uh, change from footwear, high heels namely, uh, pushing on that. And, uh, and so coming down past this first smooth facet, which is where our retrocalcaneal bursa lives, is our Achilles. And it will, it will come right across there, and it'll come down to its attachment site onto the middle facet of the calcaneal tuberosity, which is this kind of little bit more rough region uh, next to the really nice and smooth region uh, where it kind of glides past with that retrocalcaneal bursa. And then this is the weight-bearing portion, this big, thick, chunky portion of the calcaneal tuberosity. Uh, this is the, the weight-bearing facet down here. And then that will transition smoothly into the medial, uh, tubero uh, the medial tubercle of the calcaneal tuberosity. And then the smaller lateral tubercle we'll see uh, often project over here as a little cortical line. And then so this is the site for our plantar attachment of our plantar fascia, uh, and sometimes that will have some spurring. And we don't really see the peroneal tubercle here. And one thing uh, I wanted to point out is most all of the trabecular patterns in the calcaneus, they kind of extend out in this fan-shaped fashion from the subtalar joint. Uh, and we have this kind of paucity of trabeculation here, um, which is called a pseudocystic triangle. So sometimes that can look very cystic, uh, and that's why we call it pseudocystic, because um, it's not actually a cyst in there, <laughs> except for when it is, uh, beyond what we're going to get into here. Um, but it's important to note this, because if you see a sclerotic line coming down like this, often like a hazy area of sclerosis, that's a calcaneal stress fracture. So you want to see that kind of nice fan-shaped arrangement of the primary trabecular pattern. All right, um, and one structure we don't see super well here uh, that we see better on cross-sectional imaging is called the sinus tarsi region, uh, which is kind of uh, fits in this V shape. It's called the angle of Gassane or Gassane. I'm not really sure to how, how to pronounce that. And uh, we do want to pay attention to this anterior process, the top edge of the uh, posterior facet of the subtalar joint, and then the tip of the calcaneal tuberosity, because these are our reference points for drawing Bowler's angle to help us detect uh, minimally displaced calcaneal fractures. All right, so I just wanted to show you that kind of V-shaped uh, structure of the lateral process of the talus uh, is what we're seeing here. 
All right, so let's talk uh, a little bit more about the calcaneus. So one thing I didn't really uh, outline that well because we don't see it great here is the sustentaculum tali. We see the kind of the edge of the articular surface here, but oftentimes we'll see the whole cortical margin uh, kind of show up in this region, um, but it's a little bit obliqued like this uh, images, and that's why we don't see it super well uh, on this particular lateral, but I'll show you another one here in a minute where we see it great. And so this is uh, a better view here of the posterior um, surface of the calcaneal tuberosity, showing you that kind of smooth uh, portion where our retrocalcanea bursa lives. Here's our Achilles attachment site, and then this is the weight-bearing portion um, of, our, of our Achilles. And there's actually fibers continuous with our Achilles right around that uh, over into our plantar fascia. All right, so um, one thing, again, that we, I mentioned we don't see uh, well on this particular image is our anterior facet uh, of the subtalar joint, uh, where and you can see this little flattened portion on the undersurface of the um, talar head, uh, which is where that, that joint is made. So this x-ray is a bit more oblique, and uh, we can see the posterior facet here much better. You can see that they have an elongated posterior process, a steata process, Here's the uh, me medial tubercle of the uh, talus. And you can see that on the talar neck here, we've got this extra little bump called a talar ridge. Um, here's the head of the talus here again, and we can follow that down and maybe see a tiny bit of that anterior facet. Here's the sustentacular facet, and this structure here is the sustentaculum tali coming up to make that uh, middle facet of the subtalar joint. And um, one other thing you really want to pay attention to on your lateral ankle x-rays is the base of the fifth metatarsal and the styloid process because it's not uncommon for people to fracture this with a dancer's avulsion fracture of the peroneus brevis or a Jones fracture and that can manifest as ankle pain. Um, and, and so you may pick that up on the lateral views of your ankle uh, on your ankle uh, studies. All right, and so we can kind of see that, that little contour to the calcaneal uh, tubercle here. And again, noticing that fan shape arrangement of the primary trabecular pattern coming out from the subtalar joint. And we can see those three facets again here really nicely. The smooth portion, the Achilles attachment site, and then the weight bearing portion. All right, so this I just wanted to show you that subtalar facet, uh, subtalar joint. Okay, there's the anterior facet the middle or sustentacular facet, and then the large posterior facet back here. And so that matches up with the anterior facet, sustentacular facet, and posterior facet on the undersurface of the talus. And you'll notice there's a groove here and a groove here, and that uh, combined kind of makes this like circular structure called our sinus tarsi region, um, which we can see better on cross-sectional imaging. Um, here we can see that medial malleolus uh, a little bit. We can see the fibula kind of projecting around uh, like this. And um, I think that's all I wanted to show in this particular image. So this uh, is the same patient. They had another uh, ankle x-ray, which was really obliqued, uh, or ankle study, I should say, but this lateral view is really obliqued. And so the medial malleolus projects way out here anteriorly, and then the fibula is projecting here posteriorly, kind of showing you the degree of rotation there. Um, and so that degree of rotation actually has allowed us to see the sustentaculum tali uh, in the middle facet here really nicely. And now we can see that kind of anterior facet here as well with the anterior process of the calcaneus. Uh, we can see our cuboid really nicely here with minimal overlap. Um, you know, all of our uh, metatarsal cuneiform joints, you know, kind of project superimposed here. Um, we can see the navicular tuberosity here nicely. And sometimes if you look through this, you'll see uh, an os naviculare or os tibiale externum uh, there as well. All right, so um, that's all I have for you on this um, on uh, in this video. I just wanted to go over kind of um, flying by the seat of my pants. You know the anatomy that I generally look for. You know I probably missed a few things, but uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification if you don't want to miss my future videos. Again, I'm going to be trying be pumping out about one video a week. Um, on different topics that I think are valuable. And uh, so yeah, hopefully you subscribe and I will see you again soon.